Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 18.3 beta one released earlier this week to both developers and public beta testers and iOS 18.2 has been out for over a week at this point, but there's even more to talk about since the iOS 18.3 beta one is out. What's new video. We'll talk about new features, the overall experience, and not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. We're at the time of this video. There's over 16,000 votes and 156 comments. I've gone over all the comments, so be sure to stick around toward the end of the video where I go over a few of those. But first, let's talk about some Apple news. Apple actually released sleep apnea detection for Apple Watch in Brazil this week on supported devices. So if you have an Apple Watch that supports it and you're in Brazil, all you need to do is go into your health app. So we'll go into that. And if you go under browse, go to respiratory, scroll down, you can actually go to the option where there's sleep apnea notifications and enable this if you don't have it enabled. You can learn more about it. And again, it's now available in this location. I'm sure it will roll out around the world as Apple gets approval for it. Now, if you're using Apple Maps, maybe you're not using it on the iPhone, but you're using it on the web and you'll see beta.maps.apple.com. You could use this on a Windows computer as well if you wanted to check it out. It now has the option for look around. So you can look around if you want to take a look maybe at Apple Park or some other place in the world that supports it. You can sort of drive around and take a look at different locations, different icons and more. So you can see that here at Apple Park or other locations. Apple has a new activity going live for New Year's. You can see more about this on Mac Rumors where they have the activity challenge taking place on January 1st, and you can see some of the activity awards here. So if you wanna check that out, I'll link it in the description, but you'll see the challenges here and it says, let's start 2025 off right. Earn this award by closing all three rings for seven days in a row in January. Now, if you have an iPhone or iPad running iOS 8 or earlier, you can no longer use iCloud backups, unfortunately. Apple disabled that ability, so if you want to use iCloud backups, you'll actually have to use a newer version, iOS 9 or newer, on a supported device. You can still back these up to a computer using iTunes or the Finder, but you won't be able to use the iCloud backup. If you use ChatGPT, whether by itself or with Apple Intelligence, you can now access an AI assistant from ChatGPT by calling in 1-800-CHAT-GPT. So if you want to actually call in and use the assistant, you can do that all AI based. So you don't necessarily have to have Apple intelligence. You can just call that number or use the chat GPT app and maybe use it there as well. So let me know if you're enjoying the overall integration with chat GPT and Apple intelligence, or if you find it useful, maybe to make a call to a chat assistant. Now, Apple is starting to discontinue the iPhone SE 3 and iPhone 14 in the European Union. This is due to them not having USB-C, and because they have Lightning, they're no longer compliant. So you'll see this discontinued. This isn't much of an issue, as I think iPhone SE 4th generation is coming early next year, so that seems to make sense. But at this point, it looks like we won't be able to have the iPhone 14 or 14 Plus new, along with the iPhone SE 3, at least in those countries. Now, lots of news about the iPhone 17 Pro this week actually came out regarding the overall design. Some have said that the camera will remain the same, while others say it will be in a row similar to that of the Pixel 9 Pro. I think they're reserving the redesign for the iPhone Air or iPhone 17 Slim or whatever they're going to call it, but we'll talk more about that in depth as we hear more and more information come out about it in the news update next week. Now, I wanted to share a tip when it comes to the new Mail app that was introduced with iOS 18.2. Many people have been looking forward to it. However, some people really dislike it and want to know if they can switch it back or wish they could switch it back. And for the most part, you can. So if you go into Mail, you'll see we have our different categories with primary. If you tap on this, you can see all of your email at once like you used to, or you could go into the different categories with transactions, updates, and promotions. But if you want to get rid of this altogether, tap the three dot menu in the upper right and switch to list view. That will bring it back to basically what you had before. On my iPhone 16 Pro Max, you can see here, if I switch to list view, it looks basically the same with the addition of these icons here from the sender. These are things you can't really get rid of from what I can tell, but I actually appreciate this as many different mail apps implement this, but that should hopefully help you out if you want it to sort of look like it did before. Now, when it comes to new features, well, when you're running a shortcut on a device with a notch, it seems there's a little bit of a difference. So with the dynamic Island, there's not much of a difference, but if we go over to iOS 18.3 beta one on iPhone 11 and maybe go to a shortcut and then we run it, it looks like it runs a little bit different. So if we want to run maybe this one, calming sounds, you'll see, you can pick which one you want, 
but it no longer shows up in the dynamic island at the top and interferes with everything. Maybe we want to run the one calculate tip, it no longer interferes with the notch overall, so it looks like it's a little bit of a change there. Another feature or improvement of iOS 18.3 beta 1 has to do with voice dictation. It seems much more accurate this time around. So if we're in notes, you can see I'm actually talking about voice dictation while it's dictating in notes, and it's working very well and very accurately for the most part. I've had no issues with it on iOS 18.3 beta 1, and it seems to understand me a lot better this time around. And you'll see it got that correct and everything is right there. So definitely it seems improved this time around. Siri is going to be a ways out, I think. iOS 18.2 also brings a feature I didn't mention that many people have mentioned, but it has to do with the volume slider on the lock screen. I'm sure many people discovered this as they've used this here. So if we go in and maybe play a song, I have it turned down and we go to the lock screen. Let's go here to the lock screen, get out of the control center. You can see we have the volume slider there. So that will work if you want to use that now. As far as releases this week, well, we got a new version of Safari Technology Preview, bringing it to version 2.10. It was released on December 18th and is now available for macOS Sequoia and macOS Sonoma if you want to test out the latest technology and things for your website here. And you can see the release notes with different extensions and more. So that's available now. And Apple stopped signing iOS 18.1.0. One this week. It means you can no longer downgrade to that version if you're on a newer version. So if you're on iOS 18.2 or iOS 18.3 beta 1, the only option you have right now is iOS 18.2. That makes me think we'll see an iOS 18.2.1 at some point, since iOS 18.3's public release is some ways off. Now, given that it's the holiday season and typically Apple takes a break, unless there's a serious issue, I don't think we'll see iOS 18.2.1 probably until January. Based on what we've seen in the past, it could be the first week of January, or it could be the second week, and I would also expect iOS 18.3 Beta 2 to release along that time as well. So maybe the second week of January like we've seen before. So that's what we're seeing at this point, and I don't think there's going to be any change unless there's a major issue. Of course, Apple's already working on iOS 19, and that could cause slow rollouts for these updates as well, as they've been working on Apple Intelligence and trying to get that finished as well. We're waiting for Apple Intelligence with new features for Siri, Siri 2.0, that's much smarter and has better integration to the OS overall. So lots of things to look forward to, but it's going to be a while at this point. Now, before we talk about the overall experience, one thing I wanted to mention is with watchOS 11.3 beta one, they fixed the issue with screenshots. When you take a screenshot on the watch, sometimes it wouldn't show up on the iPhone. It seems to be fixed now. So if we go in here, you'll see it's down here. I took two screenshots and there it is. So it's working properly now, it looks like they've resolved that issue, at least with the beta. Now, many people are staying on iOS 17.7.2 as the experience is quite good. Apple did not release iOS 17.7.3 yet for iPhone, but so far many people say it's the best version of iOS 17, and it could be the last version as well. There's no way to upgrade to it or downgrade to it, really unless you have a device that's older and supports it, but it is available if you have an older device. Now, as far as iOS 18.2, this could be in a new direction as Apple seems to be slowing down some of the releases, maybe to finalize things and work on iOS 19, like I mentioned before. The overall iOS 18.2 experience, as I have on this Desert Titanium iPhone 16 Pro Max, is generally pretty good. However, after a week or so, it seems like stuttering has still been fixed, touch bugs seem to be gone for the most part, and stickers still show up properly in messages. However, there's some new bugs that are showing up. For example, if you're using notes and you have a large file and you go to select something, it can be very slow or laggy. People still complain of keyboard lag. So within notes, if we type this is a new note, it seems the keyboard is nice and fast for me, but that's on a newer device. I think the slowdowns are mostly on older devices. Some people still continue to say that things such as Face ID are slow, but that was fixed with iOS 18.3 betas. It seems like it's plenty fast on the newer devices at least. And sometimes the flashlight is slow to respond. I've seen that myself. You go to turn it on and sometimes it doesn't turn on for a couple seconds. So it looks like they still have some issues there, but overall it's generally pretty good. The worst thing I've heard is the phone restarting. I have heard about that multiple times from different people. However, if you do a hard reset, just turn off the phone basically, volume up, volume down, press and hold the power sleep wake button, keep holding until it reboots, and that 
typically seems to fix most of those issues. But there are some issues still going on, such as the iPhone 15 Pro wallpaper is gone, but that could just be a permanent thing. When it comes to the iOS 18.3 beta one experience, well, this is pretty great. There's very few bugs for a first beta, and it seems to be a fantastic release compared to what we've seen before. So the current public release seems to have more bugs, but this seems to be great so far with the exception of a couple small things. It's generally fast, but occasional stutter for some people. Notifications seem to show up in light mode. So that's an odd issue. So sometimes when you have a notification, the icon will be in light mode and some will be in dark mode. Another thing I've noticed is with CarPlay, I've seen more disconnects on iOS 18.3 for me. Connecting to a BMW, for example, it seems to just drop from time to time. And then an odd issue I had after using it for a few days is in messages. If I go in there, if I scroll earlier today, it was incredibly slow. The phone started to heat up. It was obviously doing something in the background, but for some reason it was really slow and not smooth. It was definitely not 120 Hertz. In fact, I'd say it was about 20 Hertz or so. It was very choppy. The frame rate was low, but it looks like it's fixed after I rebooted it. So definitely an odd issue, but it is an early beta, but definitely a good experience so far. When it comes to battery life, still there's no sign of battery intelligence. I know a lot of people were looking forward to where basically you plug in your phone and while it's charging, when you lock it, it would give you information as to how long it's going to take to charge it. Seems simple enough. It's something we've had on a Mac and many other devices for years. I'm not sure if Apple will call it battery intelligence, but we haven't seen anything to do with that. When it comes to battery life, well, first let's take a look at one that sent, was sent in. Thanks to Cameron for sending in his battery life. This is on an iPhone 16 Pro Max with 100% battery health. And you'll see he had five hours and 16 minutes of screen active time, 52 minutes of screen idle time. And this is on iOS 18.2. It definitely was better before, and it was even better when he first installed it, it seems. Now the other day or the day after that, 50% usage, three hours and 13 minutes of screen active time, 23 minutes of screen idle time. Now this could be because it's still processing, although it's not giving him that message. As far as iOS 18.3 beta one, well, depending on what it's doing until today, when it didn't stutter, it was getting a little bit better. If you take a look at battery, battery health, and you'll see it's still finishing in the background after a few days, but I'm at 100% capacity with 81 cycles. You can see more information from coconut battery here. Screen active time was four hours and three minutes. Screen idle time is six hours and 28 minutes. Yesterday I had much better battery life at six hours and 15 minutes with six hours and 53 minutes of screen idle time and using about 75% of my battery. Again, it is still working in the background, so that can take some time, but overall it seems to be pretty good. When it comes to the overall storage, many people have asked me to check that. So if we go into general iPhone storage, give it a second to load here. If we scroll to the bottom, you'll see it's using, well, we'll go to the bottom again, 18.26 gigabytes for the OS, 3.18 gigabytes for Apple intelligence, and the overall system data is 9.83 gigabytes. This goes up and down. It's going to go up and down and use it as needed. So this is something you can generally disregard unless it's using so much data that you can't install an app. But overall, I think it's doing well there. When it comes to performance, the overall experience is generally very smooth, with the exception of that one scrolling issue I mentioned earlier. Things such as opening up music, you'll see it loads fast. If we want to open up the camera, maybe take a photo, it seems to be fairly fast. It's even faster on the iPhone 11 for some reason. And if we just go over maybe to scroll in the app library, it's generally pretty fast, where ProMotion seems to respond well and is super smooth in this update. So it seems to be very good that way. As far as overall heat, well, I have noticed on iOS 18.2, it seems like it's processing in the background some more. This one still is based off the message in the battery, and it is a little bit warmer, but it's not hot at all unless you start to use Apple intelligence, then it gets pretty hot. But let's take a look with the thermal camera. And as you can see on the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.3 beta one, we're at about 32 degrees Celsius. On the 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.2, it's much cooler at about 27.4 degrees Celsius. So overall, definitely better on iOS 18.2 for me. I know that's not the case for everyone, but that's what I'm experiencing. 
When it comes to the overall benchmarks, let's take a look. On the left, we have the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.2. Then we have the iPhone 11 running iOS 18.3 Beta 1 and the iPhone 16 Pro Max running iOS 18.3 Beta 1. Overall, pretty good scores, but with the beta being early on, it's doing quite well. I ran it a couple times, but it's not the best we've ever seen so far. I would expect that as we get closer to the release candidate, but it's doing quite well on the public release and decent on the iPhone 11 as well. But this should just give you a general idea of what to expect. Now, as far as your overall comments and what you had to say, let's go ahead and take a look. Jim Paget or Paget, hopefully I'm saying that properly, iOS 18.2 still has the notes bug on iPhone SE, second and third gen models, exact same bug on iPad mini sixth gen and iPad ninth gen. The nature of the bug is when you open large notes files and try to click on anything, it hangs and does not respond and or usually crashes. The bug is not present on any device running versions older than iOS 18, which is when the bug first began and all subsequent iOS updates have sadly not fixed it yet. Ethan Cantu 24 says, I'm using iOS 18.2 on my iPhone 14. The battery performance is exceptional and the software is nearly bug free. I really appreciate the new mail feature. It helps me efficiently organize my daily influx of emails. The battery life is exceptional, lasting the entire day. iOS 18.2 is impressive and I'm eagerly looking forward to future updates in the iOS 18 series. Dentist KK said, iOS 18.2 is running pretty smoothly on iPhone 16 Pro. No major or annoying issues. Battery life could be better waiting for the next major update to get some new features and improve screen on time. Ahmed Depto 3194 said, iOS 18.2 has been the best. Battery life is excellent and the Apple intelligence runs faster on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. Blind Gordy said, I'm on iOS 18.2 on my iPhone 15 Pro and unfortunately battery life is still not as good as it should be. I noticed that the phone heats up more often than usual and sometimes it could be when watching YouTube videos or listening to songs in my music library on shuffle. I have had no indication that the phone is still indexing, so I'm not sure if it could be a software bug or something I'm doing. Otherwise, I still love the latest non-beta update, and whether a last minute 18.2.1 update comes before Christmas or not, I can live with this how it's behaving. Magnificent Production says, Hi Aaron, my 15 Pro Max is running much more smoothly with the 18.3 Beta 1. Battery drain is significantly lower as I really don't use the Apple intelligence features much. Not seeing any bugs at all. Finally, Apple is finding stability. I just wish these Apple intelligence features came out when they announced them, especially with for the 16 Pro Max. So I think Apple may have a slightly new direction with the overall experience and what they're working on with iOS 18.3 and future betas. Hopefully they'll really get things stable. I wouldn't mind a snow leopard year like we had years ago with macOS to sort of get everything very stabilized, get all the features features they've already talked about really working well and just have a great experience overall like iPhone was always known for. So hopefully we'll get some small additional changes, but additional stability would probably be my number one priority. So lots of things to look forward to, but it looks like they're going to be a few weeks out. So that's everything with iOS 18.3 beta one and iOS 18.2. If you've found any additional features, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.